Okay. Welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you for making the time to be here today in uh, this beautiful garden here in Riley Park. It, uh, first of all, acknowledge we're on the unceded homelands of Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh. And uh, we are here to celebrate some uh, big success on the Drina City front, in particular on our local food goals. And we have now over 5,000 food assets here in the city of Vancouver, which was our goal for 2020. We uh, had a goal to double our food assets, the community gardens, community kitchens, farmers markets, all the opportunities for Vancouverites to eat local food, to shop for local, grow local. Uh, we have doubled that number in uh, two years earlier than, than we expected. Uh, and that's uh, a 53% increase uh, since 2010 of uh, our gardens and markets and orchards and urban farms. We've seen uh, incredible success and uptake from Vancouverites to make local food happen. And that means we're bringing, we're bringing healthy, local, sustainable food uh, closer to home here, growing it in the city or connecting people to uh, those local sources nearby in the way that we uh, grow and prepare and distribute, eat, and, and at the end of the line, dispose of it with compost. The sustainability around food is absolutely critical to our overall quality of life and our success as a city. And that's why it's a key goal within our Greenest City Action Plan for 2020. We have um, a Vancouver food strategy as well, which uh, has be is, this is an integral part of getting more gardens throughout the city, is uh, a big goal within our Vancouver food strategy to support a, a just and sustainable food system here in Vancouver. And of course, gardens are an integral part of neighborhoods. They're a key part. So we have uh, friends, leaders from our Little Mountain neighborhood house locally here. And uh, we have uh, and we have Art Bonke here, who's also a neighbor, who's very uh, involved in the garden here, along with uh, teaching at UBC and being a, an expert on soils globally. Um, I'm joined by Stuart McKinnon as well from the Park Board. He's gonna speak about the Park Board's role in transforming this area. Probably lots of us remember this did not look anything like uh, what it looks like today when the uh, when Percy Norman Pool was here and part of the uh, Riley Park uh, Community Center was here and the transformation of this area with Hillcrest and uh, the improvements in at Bailey Stadium and transforming this space into a, an incredible community garden and green space has been uh, a huge huge priority for our Park Board uh, great leadership from the Park Board team to make it happen so. Just going back to our food uh, strategy and the work that we've done on our Greenest City front, we have a big update going to Council next week on our Greenest City Action Plan. We have, uh, we have been really focused on achieving the goals and this year we'll be announcing a number of big success uh, stories. We've seen a 20% decrease in our ecological footprint since 2007. That's one of our big goals to reduce our ecological footprint. As a city, we've seen 106,000 trees planted in Vancouver on our way to that goal of 150,000 trees planted. We have seen a 36% decrease in the distance driven per person since 2007. So people are driving significantly less in Vancouver. We've seen a 43% decrease in the carbon intensity of the buildings that we are building since 2007. Every new building is almost a 50% decrease in the carbon pollution coming from it. So we've seen uh, big successes on our work to be the greenest city in the world by 2020. And the gardens are really a core part of that and probably the closest piece of it to us um, locally within the city. Because it's the food that we eat and the neighborhoods that we live in. So a big thanks to all of you who are champions for community gardens, for farmers markets, for community kitchens, all those important local food assets that are such a priority for us in Vancouver. I'm gonna introduce now uh, our Park Board Chair, Stuart McKinnon, to talk about uh, the Park Board. And I know I see uh, Michael Weeb here from the Park Board as well. Any other parkies in the house? <laughs> but uh, I'll introduce right now Stuart McKinnon. Welcome. Thank you, Mayor Robertson. Yes, my name is Stuart McKinnon, and it's my honor and pleasure to be the chair of the Vancouver Board of Parks and Recreation. I'm pleased to be here on the unceded territory of the Coast Salish people today, along with my fellow commissioner, past Park Board Chair, Michael Weed. The expansion of local food in parks and community center is a cause that is dear to our hearts at the Park Board. 
Over the years, our staff have worked closely with colleagues at the city and local communities in achieving this goal. The fruits of the labor are evident as community gardens and local food projects take off in parks and community centers all over this wonderful city of Vancouver. And of course, it's wonderful to see Riley Park Garden behind us flourishing. And it's incredibly beautiful. We not only see food here, but also pollinating flowers to help the bees um, continue in Vancouver. This is thanks naturally to a lot of dedicated green thumbs, but also thanks to the strong partnership that we have between Little Mountain Neighborhood House and the Park Board, which in 2016 saw the creation of the garden and adjacent field house activation. The Riley Park Gardeners are activating the field house along with a local artist. Since the approval of the Park Board's 2013 Local Food Action Plan, we have enabled the creation or expansion of more than 10 significant community gardens such as this across the city and have exceeded 1,000 plots growing in our parks alone. And more are in the works. For example, Sunset Community Park Garden is a brand new one as of July 1st of this year. It's a demonstration garden for neighbors to grow food together and spark excitement about getting involved in food production. Nurturing the local food movement is taking off in many creative forms. Our golf course kitchens now use vegetables and greens from their own food gardens. Greens from these gardens also are being served up at our beach concessions. Pollinator gardens, which are so crucial to food production, are being planted across the city. And over 1,700 fruit and nut trees were sold at the Park Board Spring Tree Sale, further supporting our bee-friendly habitat. Meanwhile, our recreation team is expanding access to community kitchens and food programming at our community centers, such as gardening programs, cooking classes, nutrition education, and even canning 101. In terms of what's next, I'm happy to say our staff are working on an updated local food action plan for next year to include new elements of equity and reconciliation. And tonight, commissioners will be considering the proposed capital plan for parks and recreation, which includes $400,000 to support more community garden and local food projects. I'm so excited to be here with our partners and with the city, where about 55 years ago I learned to swim, that would used to be Percy Norman Pool here, and what a transformation we've seen in this. It is just tremendous to see how this community of Riley Park has embraced this community garden and the local food action plan. Very proud of the work the city and the park board is doing in conjunction with our community partners. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stuart, and uh, again, thanks for the great partnership between the City and the Park Board. And uh, as Stuart said, the partnership with Little Mountain Neighborhood House has been tremendous, and, and as, a, as a city, and we've got amazing city staff here who, not only in our partnerships with uh, other city entities like the Park Board, but to work with our neighborhood houses in this neighborhood, Little Mountain Neighborhood House has been incredible in the work that they've done to support community in so many different ways. The garden is one element of that and we probably wouldn't be standing here without their leadership on that front but many many different uh, important programs and supports for people who live here in the Little Mountain and uh, Riley Park neighborhood so you're welcome and uh, big thanks to Roy Mellon who is the board president of Little Mountain Neighborhood else. Welcome Roy. Thanks Mayor Robertson. Um, so the Little Mountain Neighborhood House it's a non-profit society based down on 24th and Main. Uh, it's been around for about 40 years. We just celebrated the 40th year anniversary. Uh, and it provides community programming that helps people in our neighborhood. Uh, this is one of the projects that we're proud to be a part of. Um, uh, but it's one of many. There's child care, there's immigrant services, family resources, seniors programs, a whole lot of things, uh, all done on a pretty limited budget. Uh, about 100 staff and a whole lot of de dedicated volunteers that make things like this happen. Uh, the Riley Park Community Garden, which is why we're here today, uh, it's, it's a program we've been really happy to support. 
Uh, we've also hired a food sustainability network coordinator and there's regular communal meals and uh, cooking sessions at the neighborhood house. Uh, those projects and programs bring together people from really diverse uh, backgrounds and neighborhoods and experiences uh, to share their time and food together. And there's no better way to get to know someone than over a meal. So we really appreciate that. We're happy to have had the support from the city and the parks board for this project uh, to enable us to use the field house as well uh, to deliver workshops. Um, as both the mayor and, and uh, Chair McKinnon said, this park has really seen a lot of revival over the last few years. I moved in here many years ago and went to the community center and um, played in the playground. So uh, the, the, this revival and making the park and activating it in the way that it has is really, uh, really important for the neighborhood and, and the city along with Hillcrest. Uh, looking ahead, we're looking to uh, build a new neighborhood house up on 37th uh, and Main. I'm looking forward to that moving forward along with child care and social housing. A lot of the issues that, um, that the city is interested in, uh, the neighborhood house is involved with. So thank you for coming and thanks to the city for supporting the program. We're going to hear from Joel Bronstein, who is the executive director of Little Mountain Neighborhood House, a man uh, on the ground, uh, making uh, things happen and uh, taking, looking after the, uh, the hundred odd staff at the Neighborhood House and many of the programs here in the community. Joel. Thank you, Mayor Robertson, and uh, also want to recognize that we're on, on the unceded territory of the Coast Salish people. Um, First, I, I'd like to congratulate the city on, ach on achieving its ambitious urban food system targets uh, almost two years ahead of time. Um, and we're proud to be one of the many community groups participating in this important plan. Well, we recognize how vital it is for community members to have access to healthy food choices. We also see the incredible value and potential in supporting intergenerational and intercultural food initiatives. For example, the Neighborhood House has been working with community members in developing this beautiful garden using an integrated approach. Families, youth, seniors, newcomers, and long-term residents all take part and reap the benefits of this beautiful, peaceful, nurtured land. This approach goes with the Little Mountain Neighborhood House core value of being welcoming and inclusive, which has resulted in new and unexpected opportunities and outcomes. The garden has seen a collaboration with the Vancouver Farmers Market. Fresh produce and funds donated by farmers and shoppers are collected at our donation station, which is then used in our newcomer community kitchens, our youth council, and our Syrian program. For the past five years, the city has contributed funding to the neighborhood small grant project to promote green projects. These projects have contributed to raising food literacy and sustainability in the neighborhood. This year, local residents will be able to offer a variety of educational workshops and host events at the garden here. Another development, the recent activation of the field house you can see over there, has provided a space adjacent to the garden for meetings, learning, and exchanging ideas. Earlier this year, Little Mountain Neighborhood House joined the National Good Food Organization Program with other like-minded organizations around the country in a collective commitment to achieving a healthy and fair food system. Looking to the future, we're excited by the green opportunities and possibilities that will prevent the, uh, present themselves at the 15-acre Little Mountain site as it gets developed over the next decade. Besides the plan to increase food assets, this site will support many other goals of the Greenest City Action Plan. Meet goal buildings, promoting alternative modes of transportation, just to name a few. Little Mountain looks forward to doing our part in encouraging and supporting residents businesses and other agencies in making Vancouver the greenest city in the world. Thank you. Thank you Joel and uh, I know we're all really looking forward to the new uh, Little Mountain Neighborhood House uh, just up the street here in uh, the Little Mountain 
development as that gets built out in uh, hopefully the, the near term. Uh, our next uh, speaker is Art Baumke, who's a professor at UBC and, uh, and a local here in the neighborhood who's done a lot of work here in this garden. Um, how many gardeners do we have here? Show of hands, folks are gardening. I know we got people active over there. There's another gardener. So, uh, yeah, big thanks to all of you who are gardening this space and making it so beautiful and productive. And, uh, and a big thanks to Art, who is uh, really a, a global expert in healthy soil. I don't, Art does not remember this, but when I was a young farmer, probably 25 years ago, uh, he was like a legend already in, uh, for, for farmers trying to figure out how to, to grow food, healthy food, uh, more sustainably and, uh, and nurture the soil. So fantastic that he's giving back to his local neighborhood. We'll hear from Art now. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I thought I was only a legend in my own mind. <laughs> it spread beyond that. Now, I'm uh, proud to be here uh, to speak as a senior in the Riley Park area and as a volunteer for Little Mountain Neighborhood House. I uh, strongly believe that, that food is um, an element that is necessary for all of us. It's a, it's a factor that, that integrates a lot of different things, socially and economically and environmentally. And so this garden is an expression of the Little Mountain Neighborhood House project, which uh, attempts to look at food as a important issue in the Riley Park community. So the garden uh, is only part, as you've heard, only part of what the Neighborhood House does, but I hope that uh, our approach here will give us a chance to connect, uh, like perhaps a window on the food system in the Riley Park community. Uh, we believe that there are people in this area who aren't eating well. And I think some of this owes to the fact that we have very high rents. The real estate uh, values are driving people to the point where they, by the time they've paid their rent, they may not have enough money at the end of the month to, to eat well. And so we, we want to connect with those people. We want to see if there's some way we can, we can uh, help make things a little bit better. Now, the other thing is, um, as we've already heard, this was the site of our uh, community center and the Percy Nolan Pool. It was a tremendous area to bring people together in the community historically. And we would like to capture a little bit of that, uh, that feeling of that uh, bringing people together. So outreach is a very important uh, goal of the garden. And it's one reason we've taken more of a communal approach to this rather than allotting plots to people that will be theirs for the foreseeable future. So in this case, most of the garden is managed communally and we have um, a lot of uh, expertise to back up in terms of master gardener and so on to help people learn how to grow food, when to harvest it, how to prepare it, and so on. Uh, the last thing I'll say is that uh, we're, we're quite grateful to the park board to be on park board land and the, the periphery of the garden is planted uh, to pollinator friendly species. So we're trying to enhance the biodiversity in, in this community and perhaps also to act as a bit of a, a catalyst and a starting point to, to uh, improve what we see across this uh, Riley Park community. And it connects almost seamlessly with what the park board gardeners have been doing at the edge of the garden. And so we're hoping that this will also be another aspect of the garden, in addition to food, that we'll be able to uh, contribute to uh, more biodiversity of birds and insects and, and uh, plants in, in this uh, community. So I'm quite grateful for uh, the umbrella that um, the neighborhood house has provided for us to do this. and. Um, uh, certainly, if anybody has more questions about it, I'll stick around and, and uh, uh, try to provide uh, some sort of response. So thank, thank you very much. All right, thank you, Art, and uh, thank you for drawing that connection to the, uh, the health in the local community and challenges people do have uh, with food and affordability. And I just want to recognize Mary Claire Zach, who's here from, uh, from the city, who has been <coughs> instrumental in putting together our healthy city strategy as well as James uh, they, they in, in terms of connecting the dots between 
local food and, uh, and affordability and a healthy city, making sure people do have access to healthy food and the opportunity to be in gardens is, is a really important piece that's often overlooked uh, in social programs and social infrastructure. And I just want to appreciate the great work of uh, Mary Claire and James and their team at the city uh, to have the healthy city strategy growing and uh, connecting more people at a local level. So we're going to open it up for questions for any of us. Questions on the garden first and foremost and the greenest city goals. hard-hitting questions. <laughs> so we just want to sample the local food. <laughs> so, so Mary, for the uh, $400,000 that Pablo is going to um, um, vote tonight, yeah. so what would be the next terms if those Pablo members are elected? What what would be the new uh, funding plan in the future? Uh, I'll let Stuart speak to the specifics in the Park Board's capital plan. I'm sorry. I. Um, you're referring to the 400,000 in the capital plan? Yes. That's for future expansion of community gardens and food action. So uh, we put aside that money out of the capital plan so that we can work with community groups in building new and expanding um, other uh, food growing opportunities within the city. And, and for us, it comes out of our capital plan budget because these are things that will be done uh, with land that is under the jurisdiction of the park board. And then how many uh, um, uh, cities garden will be uh, a benefit from the capital? Uh, well, as many as uh, people um, want to grow. Um, we, we really encourage this to be a grassroots community de uh, development. So uh, community groups throughout the city can um, organize themselves and approach the park board about finding land within our parks and other public spaces. And uh, we will work with community groups on helping to establish that. We have a horticultural staff that have expertise. Uh, we have land available when we can find it. And we have staff available to help them in the development. And then one last question. Uh, have you calculated how um, the number of the farmers in the city that, um, is, that, that involved in, in those uh, gardens or uh, the board uh, I don't have a, a hard number on that because of course we don't know how many people in their backyards are growing food. Uh, we do know that we, um, the city and others partner with groups like inner city farmers to encourage people to grow uh, food on their own private land. And of course we have our community gardens which we um, are encouraging as we do here at this community garden to grow food that can be shared with the community. Oh, so that, that comes to me uh, an interesting question. Are you afraid that uh, things that people uh, might be able to uh, go for marijuana at home? So because they are busy with that, so they maybe uh, less time to be spent on those uh, food, food, food things. So the, that, that is not uh, within the purview of the park board. Um, that legislation is coming down in October from the federal government. And so that would be for the federal government to be worrying about and not the park board. Any other questions? I have one. <laughs> Just curious, I've spoken to quite a few urban farmers who talk, there's a major interest in Vancouver, but they talk about some red tape in terms of getting and acquiring land. Are there going to be any changes for the Greenest City Action Plan or any bylaw changes in terms of helping these young farmers get some kind of land? We've seen unprecedented growth in community gardens and urban farms, and the city has uh, has leased acres of our public land to uh, urban agriculture now, primarily through Soul Food, who are uh, employing dozens of people uh, from the downtown east side to grow food uh, on city land. So we've seen uh, a massive increase in the amount of land that the city's made available, and uh, and obviously we're looking for more opportunities to do that. There's uh, obviously private land opportunities, and as Stuart said, um, there are uh, urban farming organizations that are connecting uh, people who own gardens and homes with, uh, with people who want to grow or farm within the city. So there's networks that are establishing more urban farms, and as uh, the park board has been growing their base within the park land as well. So I think we're seeing very significant growth and I hope we continue to see more. And certainly, um, if there are barriers or red tape, 
that are slowing down that process. That's a concern and, uh, and one we'll look into. Like, good to know the, the facts on that uh, as council and we can work with staff to see what uh, barriers we can we can remove to make sure we're continuing to grow the land base for local farming. Any other questions? Anything else? Any questions? There's one back here. There's one in the uh, one, Yeah. Yes. Um, I have a question. My name is Ava Caldwell, and I, I'm with a foundation, my own called Parasol Foundation Canada. And one of the things we do, I've been a master gardener at Van Dusen for over 25 years, and I am taking it to the people of the downtown east side. In fact, from this garden, I have to tell you that the women of the downtown east side have had fresh oregano for their spaghetti because the gardeners here have grown it. And I have to tell you, we I also do a program in the schools called Hashtag Recycle, Composting, Grow. But we had 669 tomato plants that we packaged up and we gave to seniors and to elders and to anyone who wanted them, anyone, particularly women, because we want to encourage them to grow their own food, to know the value of a fresh cherry tomato. So I want to applaud the city and thank you for all those initiatives and all the funding because that's where it starts. We get a green community eating green food because we have. So thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. So the question, <laughs> was it just a okay. statement? No, no. Okay. What can we do more? Like, tell me, you're doing your part in government. I'm trying my best, but you tell us what we can do more because this is a great city. But tell me, like, if I can do it differently? Yeah, well, let me, I may as well stand up here. I, we, um, I, the question from a, a local gardener who's, who's connecting the food to people who need it the most in the downtown east side is what more can we do? And there's, there's lots more that we can do. There's certainly uh, more gardening that we can do throughout the city. I'm hopeful that the next uh, elected council and park board are fully committed to our healthy city strategy, our local food strategy, and continuing the greenest city work. So we're establishing more gardens uh, at, on both public and private land and creating more local food and programs to, to connect people to food. I think we've, we've seen a great program at UBC Farm uh, for folks on the downtown east side in particular indigenous uh, folks who, uh, who want to connect to the farmland at UBC and be able to, um, to have that direct connection to the land and soil. Uh, we've also seen uh, important programs around the region and I, I think in a time when, uh, when the pressure on land is so intense, we still get calls to, to relax the agricultural land reserve, which would be a catastrophe for us. Uh, we, we are so lucky to have uh, our agricultural land protected here in BC and in particular around the region. We have some of the best soil in the world here that feeds our city and we have to be very vigilant, vigilant, vigilant and diligent to protect <laughs> our local farmland and to make sure um, that we have local farmers and we have people here in the city who can connect either to gardens here or to local farms in the region. That's going to be a really important piece as the pressure continues to mount on, uh, on the price of land and uh, and the desire to develop more. So we got to keep our development on on the hard surfaces and make sure we protect our farmlands and, and create more connections for uh, people here living in the city to our food and our farms. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for all your work and thanks everyone for being here today. Thank you.